kid wants to prove to his friend he has an irregular dressing pattern. He finds samples of different pants his friend wore on 50 random days, 15 jeans, 12 shorts, 11 khakis, 12 cargo. Find evidence proving the kid is right. Whoa, whoa, stay back. What are you doing here? Speak. Z-test, T-test. You guys aren't real. You guys are symbols. The only way to get out of here is if I solve this question. But I don't know anything about statistics. Okay, calm down. We need to figure out the conditions first. The conditions for a z-test involve the test having randomization, independence, a sample size less than 10%, and having the number of successes and failures to be more than 10. The question specifies the kid randomized his sample. Independence can be assumed and the sample size to use is more likely to be less than 10%. Come on, come on, what's next? The success-failure condition. This isn't a question with two outcomes. The condition's not satisfied. That was intense. So the only other test I can use is a T-test then. Whoa, what happened to that guy? So what does the t-test need? Come on, remember? I got it! Like a z-test, the t-test conditions involve randomization. The under 10% condition doesn't matter much in a t-test, but either way, it's satisfied. The last condition says the probability curve has to be nearly normal. That requires continuous data. This is something else. Did it. Yeah. Wait. There was one more test I could perform. It's a chi-square test. The data is categorical with the categories being which type of pants the boy wears. Like the others, the randomization condition is satisfied. What were the other ones? Uh, oh right, no. One variable, one group. This is a goodness of fit test. Since all the conditions are satisfied, I don't have to check the ones for linear regression. So... Say it coming now, well it's coming now, it's colder than before 
Time, and if you've got time, I could take all night. 